After Katrina, when I still worked at Sewage and Water Board, I was looking for some way to increase the resilience of the system. And I recognize that without wetland restoration, anything that we do inside the levees isn't gonna matter unless we can address our massive wetland loss that occurs at one football field an hour. Cypress forests, they do a much better job at protecting against storm surge. 80% of the flooding that occurred during Katrina is due to levee breaches, not to overtopping. So if we can protect the levee system, we can help protect these communities better. Meanwhile, forested wetlands provide some amazing protection against surge, specifically because they break the waves off the surge. So they slow it down and they take the waves off. So you might see some overtopping of levees, but you're not gonna see a complete breach of your levee system. We are now standing at the Luling Wetland Assimilation Site. So this is an area where we take treated wastewater effluent and discharge it to the wetlands for restoration purposes. The Mississippi River used to provide fresh water and sediments to these areas. So once we levied the Mississippi River, it stopped that interaction between the wetlands and the Mississippi River. So the treated wastewater mimics the Mississippi River in that it is giving fresh water and nutrients. Meanwhile, this area is starved for fresh water and nutrients, so it helps them to grow. And the fresh water actually also pushes the salt water that's coming in from the Gulf back. When the wastewater effluent enters this area and those nutrients and fresh water stimulate this wetland to grow, it starts to grow faster. Meanwhile, carbon sequestration is just a side product of photosynthesis. So as this wetland starts to grow faster because it's now healthier, it takes the carbon dioxide out of the air and through photosynthesis, the carbon gets stored in the trees as they grow and also in the soil. Tia Resources is the first nationally to introduce wetland restoration to carbon credit markets. They always felt that it was too complicated of an ecosystem. So we wrote the very first methodology that Entergy Corporation sponsored, and they also sponsored this Luling Assimilation Project. But that methodology introduced wetlands to emissions trading markets to allow for a private stream of revenue to help fund wetland restoration. Our goal is to stimulate private investment in order to expedite restoration. So it's to do it faster. This project right here is the first wetland carbon pilot project in the nation, and it will be the very first to transact credits, which is anticipated to happen in 2016. We released a study in March of 2015 that showed we could bring up to $5 billion of private investment into this region over the next 50 years through carbon finance. We are losing one football field an hour and that is some of the fastest rates of wetland loss in the world. I don't know whether we've already crossed our tipping point, but I think it's, it's a very urgent case that we use all the resources we can, all water that we have to keep these wetlands in place to protect ourselves.